Uh, see, about four years ago, uh, I felt that uh, I, I have to go further. And instead of emulate the animals, like interact with the animals, uh, do something different, like some kind of a uh, cross section between a sculpture, art, and, and a concept or in an event or action. And there's this beautiful idea of uh, inviting, collaborating with uh, a bear. And obviously, there was sort of a great animal which we have plenty of in Canada. And uh, working with them. And the idea was obviously taking my tubular sculptures, which are out of paper, uh, and they could be easily ripped and destroyed and uh, mangled and offer them to the to the bears to to participate and uh, so i used sono tubes wrapped in uh, uh, art paper and filled with some fish which is locally uh, uh, fished out of the vermilion river and uh, and some meat and basically test if they react if they like it and it actually worked. So then, instead of the meat or whatever is inside, which is then taken because the bears devour that, uh, I replace it with uh, drawings or fur and all kinds of other objects, uh, which are basically then enveloped by that uh, destruction. So that's kind of like a little core, uh, which is there forever. And I think that's what it is. It is, it is a, it is a uh, trace, it is an imprint, it's something which is a document. And it's, uh, it's history because, uh, again, uh, kind of a clash or symbiosis in this case because the bears are living and I'm living. So it's, uh, it's not a clash, it's a, it's a symbiosis. Uh, so I call them symbiotic, symbiotic sculptures at this point. So it's not just an object of an imagination. I guess if people think about just art in a traditional sense, then it's a depiction, it's a rendering, like you're, uh, you're trying to emulate an you know, appearance of something. Uh, but since, I guess, Marcel Duchamp and uh, ready-made objects, uh, we can turn anything into art. Uh, but in this case, uh, this I guess an um, extra layer of uh, preserving uh, an object, a specimen, such as uh, you do, you know, what uh, the Victorian scientists used to do uh, in the 19th century. They would bring in animals or some uh, interesting uh, minerals or uh, rare objects from other countries and put them into museums, into vitrines and into displays for people to see that. I, I always had affinity towards that. I always wanted to live in a museum. I actually do, so my living room is full of animals and bones and skulls and uh, objects like that because they're just fascinating objects. Everything in, I, I guess everything in nature is just inherently beautiful because it's functional and that's the ultimate beauty. So uh, even if it's a decay or if it's entropy, and it's an old, again, old tree or something uh, ripped apart or falling apart, that event, it's inherently beautiful.